It's got the V8 cred you wanted when you bought the V6, but not all that horsepower you'll kill yourself with found in the Shelby. It's the 2013 Mustang GT. Let's drive this guy and check the tech. Okay, what makes a California Special a California Special? It's always been kind of a little bit of a BS trim package. Back in the old days, they used to stick Thunderbird taillights on them. A little more sober nowadays, starting with what they call the three-bar Mustang badge. Look for that. Some very faint tape stripes, a little more aggressive chin, special wheels. I believe these rocker panels down here are California Special, so are the faux scoops over here. This deck lid and the phony gas cap on the rear as well as the rear fascia. As you can see, it's a lot of stuff that doesn't make you go faster, but look like you are. Now, inside our California Special, certain cues, you've got different seats, different floor mats, this kind of faux carbon fiber up here, all that's part of the trim package that is a CS. Beyond that, the technology and accoutrement in this car is the same as a standard GT Premium. Let's check it out. We do not have the optional nav head unit, which would come with what they call the electronics package. It's like 2400 bucks, as I recall. Instead, you've got what I find one of the better dot matrix displays in the biz. It's a two-color blue and white. It gives you your media and climate control basics up here. AM and FM, you would have HD radio here if you had navigation, part of the same package. And you have Bluetooth streaming audio as well as Bluetooth communications. But when you are in the Bluetooth streaming mode, you don't get much up here. No metadata on this head unit, just the fact that you're in that mode. Because our car is a GT Premium, we have a lot of nice things different in the media system. First of all, Shaker 500 audio. It used to mean 500 watts. I'm not sure if it does anymore. But it brings you those two huge subs in the doors, six speakers total around the cabin as well as satellite radio, a power driver's seat. The premium thing is a pretty important trim level for CNET users. Now let's go to this little screen in the middle. Very interesting here. You have a gauge mode, which lets you decide what you want that center gauge to do. And you've got a lot of choices. Some of them are really arcane. Look at this one, air to fuel ratio. You care about that, right? Here's your cylinder head temperature, your inlet air temperature. Oil pressure, oddly enough, just tells you normal or not. And then check this one out. You have track apps on this car. That's part of a GT Premium. Your accelerometer gives you your G-forces for acceleration, for braking, and left and right cornering. That red dot moves around. Your acceleration timer. Do your own 0 to 60 runs, for example. And you can decide if you want to do that in a way that is automatically started based on inertia. Or you can have a countdown Christmas tree, just like at the drag strip, except it's in your dashboard. The reverse of acceleration is your brake performance gauge right here. And of course, all of these have the corporately mandated proviso, track use only. Yeah, right. Now, the only way to get a glass roof in this car is to get a glass roof in this car. There isn't one of those little cutout type glass moon roofs. There's only a panoramic glass roof that is just this side of our modern Porsche Targa. I mean, it's everything but the rails done in glass, just about. Okay, transmissions. Now, as you may have spotted by now, we have the automatic, an optional $1,200 upgrade. I'll put that in quotes. This has got a drive mode, a sport mode, no slap shift here in the gate, and no paddles on a Mustang. Now, this is very interesting. As we get on the road, you'll find out more about why I find this to be a big setback in the car. Your only shiftable interface is this rocker here on the side of the handle. Now, let's go see what puts power here. Now, our car is also optioned up with the Shaker Pro audio upgrade. You're thinking, why the hell am I back here to talk about the audio upgrade? This is why. Here's a big piece of it. Look at this powered sub. It's the size of some of the smaller cars made by Ford. This is a third sub. And I don't think I would take this thing across any national border in a 911 world. They're going to lift this trunk and say, that's a dirty nuke. And then you're going to go to Gitmo. And you can't watch CNET videos there. Luckily, at Gitmo, they provide all your clothing for you because once you got this sub, there's not really enough room for a big suitcase. 
Now, of course, the GT is really about the engine. They resurrected the 5.0 moniker for the more recent GT, and you're back to this big old 302 V8. It's a whole different motor than the old 302. This is all aluminum, variable valve timing, independent on exhaust and intake. No direct injection, though, on this engine. It's still relatively low-tech in that respect. Here are the numbers. 420 horsepower, 390 foot-pounds of torque. That's if you're using premium gas. Feed it the cheap stuff, and you drop down to 402 and 377. With full power, you're getting this guy to 60 in about 4.7 seconds. Weighs about 3,600 pounds, by the way, while delivering 1526 MPG with a manual 1825 if you get the automatic. Okay, what's it like to drive this car? Well, first, you hang out the rear end just to start the day. Then you realize you've got a great motor here, kind of hemmed in by a dopey transmission. It's not a bad automatic. These modern automatics are pretty impressive, but it mutes what's coming out of that engine. You get little glimpses of it once in a while. You gotta lock this guy down in sport mode. You can influence the gears with that rocker switch, but that is so completely ergonomically wrong in a muscle car to me. I want paddles or I want a slapstick or something. I will say that when you're in sport mode, this transmission has pretty good shift logic. You're in a turn, you're coming in fast, you're hitting the brakes a bit. It knows how to shift down pretty well. These Mustang rear ends, of course, are known for being a little bit antiquated. They've done a lot to refine them over the years. You do find the car bridging the gap between automotive and airplane when you go over really rough pavement. And in a sweeper like this at speed, if I had some washboard up here, I'd be shutting up, not talking to you, and watching my knuckles get white. So this car can require a certain amount of finesse to keep it on the ground, on the wrong pavement, at the wrong speed, at the wrong cornering angle. Now let's price our Mustang GT, 31,000 for the V8 car, but you really want to add the premium trim level, 4,000 more. It brings you all those important pieces of technology and niceties that I showed you in the cabin. Now, the one I'm more of a wobbler on is the electronics package, 2,400 bucks for navigation, 10 gigabyte hard drive, HD radio, DVD playback. I might actually skip that one. And I'm not real convinced about this California special stuff. That's two grand more I'll also put in my pocket. Automatic transmission for 1,200, no way in hell. This car demands the six-speed manual, in my opinion.